Good morning everybody, myself Srimati H. Chashma, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, ADB First Grade College, Harpen Harding. In this video, I will discuss about Langley's theory of paramagnetism. Paramagnetic substances are partially magnetic substances. They possess a permanent magnetic dipole moments, but in the absence of external magnetic field, the dipole moments will be orienting random direction. When the, this specimen is subjected to an external magnetic field, all the magnetic dipoles try to align themselves along the direction of the external magnetic field. So, in this theory, I am going to arrive at the expression for magnetic susceptibility and we are going to show in this derivation that magnetic susceptibility is uh, positive and it is depending on the temperature. So, for this let us consider that the Langevin assume that each atom has a permanent magnetic moment M. The only force which is acting on the atom is that due to the external magnetic field. Here I have given the diagram how the Larmor's precision is going to take place for the atom when it is subjected to an external magnetic field. So, this is axis of the dipole. So, this is inclining with reference to the external magnetic field. This is just a figure is referring to the one atom. If we consider number of atoms, n number of atoms present in the specimen and each atom will be inclining with a different inclination. Let theta be the inclination of the axis of the dipole. Then the number of atoms which are present in the small range of inclination theta and d theta plus d theta is given by the expression dn is equal to c e to the power mb cos theta by kt into sin theta d theta where t is an absolute temperature and k is the Boltzmann constant. Putting mb by kt as alpha this expression reduces to dn is equal to c e to the power alpha cos theta into sin theta into d theta. Therefore, the total number of atoms between the entire inclination can be calculated by integrating this equation between the limits 0 that is the inclination minimum inclination can be taken as 0 and the maximum inclination can be taken as 180 degrees. Therefore, integrating this equation between the limits 0 to pi we will get the total number of atoms present in the entire inclination theta. So, here is the value that is a number of atoms between the 0 to 2 pi inclination. Substitute the value of d and in this we will get this expression. Putting cos theta is equal to x sin theta and into d theta can be written as minus dx here. So, so this expression becomes n is equal to 1 limits. If you change the limits, if theta is taken as 0 and automatically if you substitute theta in this x will be 1. So, the lower limit will be 1. For an upper limit, if you, in place of theta, if you substitute pi, we will get a x as minus 1. So, the limits 0 to pi will change to 1 to minus 1 and writing this cos theta as x e to the power of alpha x and sin theta d theta as minus dx, we will get this expression. So, this negative sign can be eliminated by changing the limits here. So, n is equal to writing it as minus 1 to n and negative sign can be eliminated. The integration of e to the power of alpha x into dx is e to the power of alpha x by alpha and applying the upper limit and a lower limit we will get the expression for n as this one. So, c is equal to cross multiply it will get n alpha divided by e to the power alpha minus e to the power minus alpha. Now, let us consider the component of each magnetic moment parallel to the applied field is m cos theta. Then the total magnetic moment of all n atoms contained in any volume of the substance is nothing but a magnetization and is given by the product of the magnetic moment and the number of atoms between the inclination 0 to pi and substitute the value of dn. So, the dn value I have mentioned here substituting this in this position we will get m cos theta into c e to the power alpha cos theta sin theta into d theta. Again putting 
cos theta is equal to x and dx is nothing but minus sin theta into d theta and change the limits as usual in the previous case that is you are going to get limits between 1 to minus 1 as so and so now eliminate this negative sign by interchanging the limits so you will get the cm into integration between the limits minus 1 to 1x e to the power alpha x into dx integrating this integration by parts we will get this magnetization as this much and substituting the value of c that is c value i have mentioned here we have to substitute this in place of c we will get this expression now retaining this n out of the bracket and just to push this quantity alpha divided by e to the power alpha minus e to the power minus alpha inside the bracket the expression reduces to this form and this e is nothing but a hot hyperbolic alpha and the entire function hot or hyperbolic alpha minus 1 by alpha can be written as Langevin's function which is nothing but L alpha. Now plotting a graph of m versus alpha will get the graph of this type that is as alpha changes the magnetization acquired by the substance goes on increases and after certain stage it is going to reaches a saturation that means all the magnetic dipoles will align themselves parallel to the magnetic field this is that is nothing but a saturation position so consider a first case here at lower temperature the Langevin function will tends to 1 therefore the previous equation this m is equal to m n l alpha becomes just m into n which is indicating that at a certain alpha value it is going to attain a saturation that means all the dipoles are going to be parallel to the magnetic field in case 2 let us consider a normal conditions under normal conditions alpha is very small therefore the uh, Langevin's function becomes a alpha by 3 here substituting this value in the magnetization expression this is the magnetization expression at l alpha we have to substitute l alpha by 3 we will get this as m n alpha by 3 and substitute the value of alpha alpha we have taken it as m b by k t substitute it in this one we will get n m square b by 3 k t and replacing b by mu naught h because b can be written as mu naught h here so the total expression for magnetization will become this much now the susceptibility is nothing but a ratio of m to h substitute the value of m and divided by h will get this h h gets cancels this will be your final expression for the susceptibility that is mu naught n m square divided by 3 kt so from this expression it is clear that the susceptibility is positive that is the susceptibility of the paramagnetic substance is positive and it is depending on temperature absolute temperature if i take these quantities as constant okay mu naught n m square divided by 3k is taken as some constant then the susceptibility of a paramagnetic substance varies inversely as its temperature that is as the absolute temperature goes on increases the susceptibility decreases the meaning of this is if you go on increase the absolute temperature the paramagnetic substance loses its property and it may become a diamagnetic substance so this is all about the Langevin's theory of paramagnetism